Happy Monday to you. Welcome back out to the front porch. Time for another episode of Monday Meditations. Hope you have your Bibles. You're ready to dig a little deeper into the book of Proverbs. We're dealing with wisdom literature when we're looking at the book of Proverbs. And he talks about wisdom a great deal. In this section that we're going to be looking at in chapter 3, we're going to be noticing verses 13 through through verse 18 today and, and kind of care, keeping in mind that idea of value and the value of wisdom. We place a high value on certain things in our lives. Sometimes what is valuable to you may not be valuable to someone else. Just because it's valuable or not valuable to you, though, doesn't necessarily determine its intrinsic value. The value that it has alone. There are certain things that you take a wedge of gold and you put it before some someone who doesn't understand the value of gold, doesn't understand it's, it, it, what it means. It may not mean much to them. It's just a block of, of some shiny metal. They may not think anything about that. But you put it before someone who who knows the value of it and they do great and terrible things to obtain that. The thing is, though, gold is valuable whether you realize it or not, whether I realize it or not, it's still valuable. Wisdom, in a way, is similar to that, but not exactly, and we'll talk about later. In this text, he talks about the value of wisdom and how it should be seen, how we should desire it in our lives. Now, again, Solomon, we believe to be writing most of the Proverbs, writing as he were to his son to encourage him to gain this wisdom. Now, let's start with verse 13 and, and see the value of wisdom. He says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. He finds wisdom and gets understanding. When you go back, and I was reading and studying on this a little bit more, when you look at that word finding or that word uh, getting, it carries more of an idea of laying hold on and hanging on to. You have it as a possession. It's not just something that you're, you're searching for that you'll never find. This is something you lay hold on and you hold on to with all your might. It's valuable and that's why you do this. So happy is the man who does this. He's a happy person. He's a content person. He's, he's fulfilling his purpose in life. The purpose that God has given us, of course, is to fear him and keep his commandments. This is the whole of man. And I'm not going to be successful in that without wisdom, without understanding. When we find those things, this is a different type of wisdom that we're talking about here than the wisdom that James would mention in James chapter uh, 3, verse 15. That wisdom he talks about that, that's not from above, that wisdom that's earthly, that wisdom that's devilish, he would even say. That's not the wisdom we're talking about. That's the wisdom one gains just from the physical realm in which we live. We gain wisdom through life, no doubt about it, through our experiences, through our, our knowledge, through the education that we get. We gain levels of wisdom. Uh, something as simple as if you've ever touched an electric fence, you know not to do that again. You, that's wisdom but it's wisdom from experience. But that's just an earthly wisdom. This is a more in-depth wisdom. This is a wisdom that is from above, a wisdom that comes from gleaning from God's word, what God wants from us, seeing in the examples of God and how he treated his people, how he views sin, how he views his people, how he views righteousness, how he views eternity. And all of those things we get from his word, we apply it to our lives. And the one who gets this is a happy person. He's more of a content person. He goes on and says in verse 14, For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than of fine gold. Remember we mentioned gold earlier. He goes on and talks about precious rubies in the next verse, verse 15. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire, and not to be compared unto her. He's personifying wisdom with attributes of, of humanity. He's going to talk about later on with arms and, and the concept of walking. But wisdom is valuable, and it's something that it can't really even be compared to those things, like gold and silver and precious stones. But he uses those things. Why? Because the people who would be reading this, you and I even today, understand that there is value in those things, silver, gold pearls, rubies, precious gems, there, there's value in those things. Value monetarily speaking. And the more money some people see is more power. And, and we see that in our world around us. But there's something greater. Wisdom is greater than that. Wisdom has a, has a greater value than all of these. More precious. Something to be held dear. He said there in verse 15. It's better than that of silver. Better than the gain 
of fine gold. And, and I, I, I know as well as anyone else, it, it would be great to have as much uh, wealth as possible and not have to be concerned with paying bills and the good that you could do with that wealth. But sometimes, as Paul would say to Timothy, people have pierced themselves through with many sorrows because of the what? Love of money, the root of all kinds of evil. And we know that from history, we know that from the world around us. But he goes on and he says that this idea of desiring, there's things that you desire. You can't, more than you can even desire. Now, we can desire a lot, but the value of wisdom is far above and far exceeds that of which we can even desire, even imagine to have. Jesus would use words like, uh, what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? See, the value of the soul is greater than that of the whole world. And people have imagined owning the whole world, but this is something of greater value than that. Wisdom, of course, teaches us that we'll, we can't own the whole world, and even if we did, it's not worth much when we die. That doesn't mean a thing. We leave that behind. The value of the soul. What is the price of the soul? The price of our soul is the, the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of His Son. He gave that sacrifice for you and for me. Wisdom teaches us to live accordingly, knowing that. And so he goes on and he says that it's not to be, I, I like the King James reading of this, are not to be compared unto her. I understand that the text carries an idea of you can't compare them, but I like the wording of this, not to be compared. Don't even try to compare. Because sometimes what we do if we're not careful in this trying to compare and elevate wisdom, it gets us focused on the value of those precious metals and the monetary value of those things. And maybe we get sidetracked and lose focus. We can do that if we're not careful. Wisdom says avoid that. Just see the value in God's blessings in our lives, the wisdom that he offers us from above. He goes on and talks about why it's so valuable, what gives it even more intrinsic value. Verse 16, he says, Length of days are in her left hand, or right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Length of days, it's in her, not near her or not on her right hand. It's in her right hand. Again, the personification of giving hands to wisdom and, and attributes of humanity, saying the wisdom is, is like a person here, like a, she's giving you this, from she's offering you this. From her right hand, she offers you this length of days, long life. And when you think about that, and I think about the idea of riches and honor, I go back and I'm reminded, say Solomon writing these Proverbs, you remember in Solomon's life, he was given an opportunity. God offered him whatever his heart desired. If you'll look with me at 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, starting with verse 11, you know in that context, I dare say you remember in that context, that Solomon would ask for a wisdom, basically, a discerning heart that he could lead so great a people. He needed that. He did. He said, I'm young. I don't know where how to go in or, or come out or go in. I, I don't know when to do these things, and you want me to be the king over your people. I need wisdom. That's what I need. And so here's what God said to him, verse 11, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 11. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all of thy days. What did he say? I'm giving you the things that you didn't ask because of what you did ask was so meaningful and so on point. You asked for wisdom. You asked for the right thing, and God says, I'm going to abundantly bless you. And we know from the history of Solomon as king, he did just that. He gave him not only length of days, but he gave him riches and honor. And so here's this same Solomon saying to his son on the other side of those blessings, he's saying to him, length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. 
Length of days also goes back to what he said in verse 2 of this same chapter in Proverbs chapter 3. He says, For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Again, the idea of the commandments of his father and mother. Following in those footsteps, following in those commandments. Solomon learned this lesson, and he's passing that on to the next generation. The question is, will we listen? We know his son didn't listen. His son didn't pay attention to all of this. And, of course, the kingdom was divided under his reign. And as we go on, though, he, he not only talks about length of days and riches and honor, he also talks about, in verse 17, that her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. A pleasant path. We like a pleasant day, don't we? We like an easy path. We like something that's easy for us to walk, easy for us to enjoy the, the beauty of God's creation, the glory of His nature that's around us, the singing of the birds. The, we can go on and on with the examples, but he says if you're following after wisdom, your way is going to be pleasant. That doesn't mean that everything's going to work out and that you're never going to have some difficulties and hardships. No, because if you look at that last word in verse 17, her paths are peace. Many of God's faithful endured hardship and war, even. Physical atrocities that were done upon them. But there was always, for those who were faithful, a peace within. A peace knowing that no matter what happens in this life, I know where I'm going to be on the other side. Paul would say it very clearly. I'm, I'm in a straight, I'm in a difficult pass. A straight between the two, whether to depart and be with the Lord, which is far better, or to remain here and preach to you. It was a difficult thing for him to choose. Preaching to those who are around him in this world caused him many hardships, being stoned, being beaten with rods, shipwrecked, all of those things that befell him. But he stayed faithful for, because of the purpose that he had, yes, but he stayed faithful also because of the faith that he had and the commitment that he had to God and the trust that he had that he would be with God. That's a peace that passes understanding. That's a peace that this world can't fathom. And anyone who is not willing to conform to the will of God and to serve Him faithfully and put their complete trust in Him shouldn't expect to have a peaceable life, shouldn't expect to have a pleasant path. You seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, He said all these things will be added to you. He promised that and He can keep it. Then verse 18 says, She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. She's a tree of life. Think about that tree of life. I, I think back to the beginning in the, the Garden of Eden. There was a tree of life that was there in the Garden of Eden. And there's also a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat thereof, you will surely die. The tree of life, they were separated from that tree of life because of their sin. We have the tree of life mentioned again in the book of Revelation. Revelation 22 and verse 2. And the leaves of that tree, they give life. They give healing. And when I think about wisdom being compared to a tree of life, I'm reminded of Psalm 1, also in verse 3. Psalm 1 and verse 3 talks about the blessed man, the one who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. His delights in the law of the Lord. Yes. In his law he meditates day and night. Yes. Then verse 3. He shall be like a tree that was planted by the rivers of water, gives the fruit in its season, doesn't wither. All of those things talked about of this blessed man compared to a tree of life. What do you think it takes to have that? Wisdom, as he says here in this text. She is wisdom, that is. She is a tree of life, but only to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth holds on, continues to hold on to her. You think about being famished and being hungry, and you happen upon an apple tree. That apple tree has the ability to give fruit and to, to give sustenance to, to appease your hunger. But as long as you're just looking at that tree, you're not going to be fed. You have to go lay hold upon that apple, partake of that apple, eat that apple. And if you're going to continue to be fed by that you stay close to that tree. You stay close to the source of the sustenance. God is the source of wisdom. Are we staying close to Him and studying His Word? That's something on which we can meditate this Monday 
and every day. May God bless you till we meet again. <music>